All right, grade six. Um, we are moving on to a slightly different part of the unit. Um, this unit is two basic ideas, data, and now we're moving into probability. Now remember, probability is the likelihood of an event occurring. So knowing about probability helps us to compare events to solve problems and to understand the real world. Our concept today is to demonstrate an understanding of the possible outcomes and to determine the theoretical probability of an event. So those are two key ideas there. Uh, possible outcomes, what are the possible outcomes, and then knowing that, use that to determine the theoretical probability. In theory, how probable is it that this event will occur? How likely? All right, so let's take a look here. We have Jamie and Alex who are playing prediction products. Products, remember, we know means to multiply. It's the answer with multiplication. So they take turns rolling two dice, each labeled one to six, so normal dice. If the product, the answer after multiplying, of the two numbers that is rolled is odd, Jamie gets a point. If the product is even, Alexis gets a point. The first person to get 20 points wins. Who would be more likely to win? Well, here's one way to help you predict the winner. Organize the possible outcomes into a table. Each number on a die has an equal chance of being rolled. So it's just as likely you're going to roll a 1, a 2, a 4, a 6, a 3. It doesn't matter. You're just as equally likely to roll each. So from the table, we can see that there are 36 possible outcomes. Altogether, there are 36 possible things you can get. 27 of them are even. So let's just take a quick peek here. Even, 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 even. These, This row, all of them are even. Here we've got a couple even as well. Again, this entire row is even. Here we have a few even ones as well. And again, this entire row is even. Hmm. I think I would rather be Alexis because uh, it looks like she has a much more likely chance of winning. If there are 27 possible ways for her to, to determine an even product, and for Jamie, there's only nine possible ways to get an odd product. So this can be used, probability can be used to determine if you, if this is really a, a likely probability and, and what should you choose. So if you were given the option, knowing what you know now, I think you'd probably choose to be Alexis as opposed to Jamie and choose to uh, have the even answer be the winning um, option. So we can use what we know about probability to help us determine whether or not something's a good choice for us. All right, so we say the probability of getting an even product is 27 out of 36. We write the probability of an even product as a fraction. So we talk about this, this as a fraction. We would write it as 27 out of 36 being the probability of having an even number. The probability of getting an odd product was 9 out of 36. We write the probability of an odd product as 9 over 36. So the probability of having an odd answer is 9 out of 36. Each of these probabilities is a theoretical probability. A theoretical probability is the likelihood that an outcome will happen. So that's what a theoretical probability is. In theory, how likely is it that that outcome will happen? We always communicate theoretical probability in a fraction with the number of favorable outcomes on the top and the number of possible, total, possible outcomes on the bottom. So the probability that Alexis will win is 27 out of 36. The probability that Jamie will win is 9 out of 36. So as we said, Alexis is more likely to win. So an outcome is one result of an event of an experiment. So tossing a coin has two possible outcomes, heads or tails. 
A possible outcome does not tell you the likelihood. It just tells you what is possible. It doesn't say which is more likely or which is less likely, just what is possible. The theoretical probability is, a, is communicated in a fraction, um, and the theoretical probability is a fraction comparing the number of the outcomes you want to the total number of outcomes. So what you want on top and on the bottom, the total number of possible, so total possible outcomes. So say, for example, we were rolling a dice. Um, this one is a 10-sided dice. It's numbered from 1 to 10, um, and we want all even numbers. So then as a fraction, that would be, well, it's 10 possible numbers, we said, and in there, there were five even numbers, two, four, six, eight, and ten. So our theoretical probability of an even number on a ten-sided dice, or die because I've only got one, would be five out of ten. So the, what do we want? We want even. That's what's on the top. What's possible? We uh, Total possible is ten. That's what's on the bottom. Let's take a look at another example to help us with this. Here we have a jar. It has five blue marbles, six red marbles, seven green marbles, and seven white marbles. Without looking, without looking being key, a student picks a marble from the jar. When we pick a marble without looking, we say the marble picked is picked at random. So we randomly choose a marble from the, from the jar. First, we need to consider what are the possible outcomes. Well, we could end up with a blue marble, a red marble, a green marble, or a white marble. So then, what is the theoretical probability of picking a green marble? Well, each marble has an equal chance of being picked. There are seven green marbles, so that's the favorable outcomes. That's what we want. That goes on the top. The total number of marbles, well, we have to go back. There was five and six and seven and seven, so total is 25. So that becomes our bottom number because there are 25 possible outcomes. The theoretical probability then of picking a green marble is seven out of 25. Seven is the green that we want. 25 is the total possible marbles that could be chosen. What could we get as an outcome? We could get blue, we could get red, we could get green, we could get white, so that's possible. Um, but there's 25 mar marbles altogether, so the total possible is 25 different marbles that could be chosen, um, seven of which are green. So the likelihood we would choose seven, sorry, the likelihood we would choose green is seven out of 25. All right, now you get to practice with your elbow partner. Here we have a card game. Uh, these are our cards. You need to determine what are the possible outcomes, what's possible, and how many are there. So what are they? How many are there? And then what is the theoretical probability of getting a tree? So three things you need to do with your elbow partners. Press pause and try those now. All right, well, how many possible outcomes are there? Well, how many cards are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that means there are eight possible outcomes, eight things that we can pick. Uh, what are they? What could we get? Well, we could get the recycle symbol. We could get the tree. And we could get what looks like a compost box or a box. So what are the possible outcomes? Recycle, symbol, the tree, or the box. So then theoretically, the possibility of getting a tree, well, how many trees are there? Well, there are three trees. And how many possible outcomes are there? Well, there's eight, because there is eight cards altogether that we could choose from. So our theoretical probability of getting a tree is three out of eight. Now that you've done that, uh, why don't you try the theoretical probability of the box? What is the likelihood, what is the theoretical probability of getting a box? 
press pause and try that with your partner or partners. Oops, a box, not boxes. I'm getting a box. All right, again, we know our total is eight. That hasn't changed. The box, how many boxes are there? Well, there's only two. So theoretical probability of getting a box is two out of eight. So if I were to choose, um, if my winning card were a tree or a box, I'd prefer my winning card to be a tree because there's more of them. So again, we can use that theoretical probability to help us to determine whether an option is a good option or fairly possible or not as likely. All right, now you're moving on to your concept practice, page 273, 275, numbers 1, 2, 4, 5, and 8. You are working on determining the possible outcomes, what's possible, how many are possible, and then from that, determining the theoretical probability of an event. Uh, remember, of course, if you have questions as you're working, that you let me know. Uh, remember to communicate your theoretical probability in fraction form. Um, away you go.